In this video, we will create this effect, which can be a logo for a company, for example. We have two P's, and you have a connection. So maybe P, U, P, for example, for a company. So anyway, let's see how something like this uh, will be done. I will not uh, start to create it now. Instead, I will first explain how to add things together how to subtract things from each other and why we need to do that. For example, if I had a rectangle like this and I had a circle, all right, and um, I changed the color of the circle just to make them different. Let's say that I wanted to take the circle out of the rectangle. I would place the circle on top because the one you place on top will subtract itself from the other one that's below and I'll go to window and path finder then I'll select both so I need two objects one on top of the other I'll select both and go to pathfinder and what I'm looking for is subtract so I click here and now the circle is taken out from the rectangle. Can I? I will undo and um, I'll press Control C and Control. If I press Control V, I would paste it, but not exactly in the same place it was copied from. If I press Control C and Control F, which is pasted in front, it will be pasted exactly where it was copied from. Why do I do this? Because I want to change the size like this. So now, if I go to view outline, I will see that I have the rectangle, two circles. I will repeat the process. If I wanted to create a third one, Control C, Control F, and then Shift Alt to scale. Shift to keep it a perfect circle and Alt is to scale from the center. All right, see what I'm gonna do now. I'll press Control Y, which is the outline command. Outline is to see the lines. The shortcut for this is Control Y. So I'll select the rectangle and the, the rectangle and the outermost circle and I'll create a subtraction I get this now I want to subtract these two circles from each other so control Y I want to subtract this and that remember this one is above the small one because I pressed control C and control F which is spaced in front at the beginning so it's above and the subtraction works in a way that the above one will subtract the lower one. So I want to reverse the order of these two objects. I want to place this one in the very back so that the small one will carve it. All right, this one, I want to place it in the back so that the small one will carve it. So what I can do is send this to the back or bring this to the front. Let's, since this is selected, right click, arrange, and sent to back so now it's in the back so if I selected both these now and subtract I would get this so I can leave it at that or I can cut these and just leave the arc to have the form of the rectangle that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna create a rectangle that goes like this all right with the smart guides I can actually align it here I'll select these two actually this um, not this I'll select that and this and subtract and the last cut is from here so I'll create another rectangle smart guides to align perfectly like this and then select this and that and subtract 
So that's now, for example, my logo, in case that's the one I wanted to create. So once I'm happy with this, you see that you have all these objects that make up the originals. All right? If I don't want to change anything anymore, I can go to object and choose, for example, flatten appearance. And what this will do is actually remove the old objects that it had and just give you this shape. You can still edit, you can still go to points and move the points around, which obviously I don't want to do now, but you can do that. But at least you don't have all the other objects forming this anymore. And because you want uh, this to be a logo, for example, I'll give them the same color. And maybe add some text here. Let's add another P. If I wanted the P to have the same color, I can use the eyedropper and click there. This is still a text object, so I can change the um, font. Okay, let's choose this one, Tahoma. And uh, I want to scale it down, but I want to create outlines. All right. How do I align it here? I can go and place it there. And then I would just shift it to the right. And then I would scale it. Like this. And maybe just move it like this. I know that it's aligned from below. So all I have to do is align it from here. Okay, and that would be, for example, my logo. So once I'm happy with this, I can select, right click and group so that this is now selectable as one object. It's a group, which means that if I change the color, both will change. So that's how I use the Pathfinder to create subtractions, which I can incorporate into a logo. So whenever I ask you to design a logo from now on, this is the way you should think to design that logo. If I wanted to take this to InDesign, all I have to do All I have to do is drag it down to the InDesign interface. And it comes here. Along with transparency, which is a good thing. And it's still vector graphics, which means that it will play, it will uh, print at very high quality. And I can still change its fill color from here if I wanted to. So you have complete synchronization between InDesign and Illustrator. All right. You can even give it a stroke and change the stroke color from here. Like this. All right, so if we go back to Illustrator now, we want to create this. That's now very simple because we can drag down a guide. We can type the letter P. We create an outline out of this so that it's a regular shape. And um, we snap this down here. I use my Reflect tool Let's make a copy first, Control C, Control F, although we can reflect with a copy, but I don't want to complicate it now. And uh, I'll press Shift to create the reflection at 90 degrees. And that's what I have now. Now I want to create the connection. What I would do is create an ellipse or a circle. Press Alt to create it from the center. All right, and um, 
shift to go like this. All right. I can, if I like, um, just grab this. and aligned perfectly using uh, smart guides and also from there so once I have it like this control C control F control Y for outline shift alt and go like this all right then then I have to zoom in um, again aligned it from here and align it from there all right it's good now okay so uh, what I need to do now is select both of these and carve the smaller one and then I would create a rectangle also it snaps because of the smart guide select both of these and there you go so once you're happy with your result you can select all of them and choose edit and uh, flatten transparency sorry object and flatten transparency uh, flatten appearance expand appearance here and um, that's it I can now either combine them from here so now they are one object or I can group them together and that's how I would do it.